Tom. Come on, Dad. You take it easy tonight. I don't want you hurt. I'll be fine. Now, if you go down... I won't go down. If you do, there's no shame in staying down, OK? OK. Right, come on, let's go. No sense getting yourself killed, Tom. Dad, I won't go down. Right? What? What are you doing here? Well, it's just that it's 9.30 and you're not at work yet. Well, couldn't you have run? I did. You don't look so great. I'm fine. I just... I slipped in. I think you need to see a doctor. I'm going to make an appointment with Sophie. I don't want to see a doctor. This is ridiculous. I'll see you at the station. Oh, for heaven's sake. What the hell are you... They're trying to kill me. Who? Them. Oh, don't you have a hanky here? All right. What's all this about? Who's trying to kill you? Kids. What kids? Don't know. Look, if you're being bullied, it's a matter for your parents and your teachers. You're the sergeant. You're the boss of everything. Not today, I'm not. If you get bullied again... You don't wash up much. You need to get to school. Can you take me? I've got to go to work. You can drop me off on the way. It'll take me at least 20 minutes to get ready. Oh wait. Jeez, you go to the toilet a lot. Yeah? Well, you don't blow your nose enough. Wow, a real police car with a real policeman. Can we turn the siren on? No. What about the radio? Don't you need to call someone? No. Where's your gun? The station. That's dumb. It's for security. But what if you need it? I won't. Yeah, but what if you do? Where do you live, anyway? Next door to you. You just moved in. We moved in two years ago. I've been busy. This is the back of the school. Can't we park out the front? I haven't got time. We're at the school. This is the school. Go to school. Ah, oh, boss, uh, there's a few things you should know about. There's a praying out on the highway, no injuries, but uh, Joss and Kelly are out there now. I need the pay sheets signed and the reconciliation is done. You're right, by the end of the week. All right, it's just that we're a bit behind, so sooner well, or tomorrow. Or well, this morning would be good. Right, right. right. Uh, also, there are some accountable documents that need writing off. Oh, and the cleaners need painting. Can, and there's can I just get a cup of coffee? Well, that's the thing. Joss broke the plunger. Is that all? Uh, yep, that's all. But uh, those pay sheets were their priority, boss. Yes. Boss, I've made an appointment with the doctor. I don't need to see so any... So if he gets booked out really early without an appointment, you've Amy, got no chance. Amy, I said no. Senior Sergeant, you've got a minute. One o'clock. I need to talk. Can it wait? No. I'm being followed. What? Who by? I don't know, but there's been this silver falcon up my ass for two days now. It's a small town. You could be going to the shops at the same time. And home from the shops, and then to work, and back home again. Uh, could be kids, I'm trying to be funny. Two adults, males, but I haven't been able to get a good look at them yet. Older kids. But can't you look after this yourself? I'm sure, but you're the one who gave me the no Lone Rangers. We're all on the same team speech. Be yeah, all right. Get the Rego and check on the own. Yeah, I did. Uh, the car's a rental, but the name they gave isn't listed. So I'm not completely dispensed with the Lone Ranging. Oh, I thought I'd make sure I had all the information before I spoke with you. 
Well, if they're not on the system, they could be using false names. Which would mean false licences. And these guys aren't mucking about. What are they up to? Why are they following you? Beats me. All right, well, look into it and keep me informed. Yeah. Hey, boss. Oh, I for God's sake. Um, I've got a Francis Sullivan after you. I don't know any Francis Sullivan. Well, that's the name of the kid we found tied upside down in the monkey bars. He insists on speaking to you only. Is he, um, runny nose, bit chubby? Yeah. yeah. He had the biggest wedgie I've ever seen in my life. I practically had to pull yeah, his All right, thank his... you. I get the picture. Yeah. Sergeant Tom. How do you know this kid, anyway? Bad luck. You can't keep running to me every time you've got a problem. You're going to have to learn to look after yourself. How? Yeah. I don't know. When I was your age, I, I took up boxing. Will you teach me? That is a very bad idea. No, it's not. It's an excellent idea. No. It's because I'm too flabby, isn't it? No, it's because I'm too... Francis, some kids are born to fight and some kids are born to run. Now, I suggest... I suggest you take up running. Acting sergeant. Boss. You've had more recent experience than I have at this. Sort the kid out, will you? Give him some tips on how to stay out of trouble. Boss, these guys that are following me... We've discussed this. I've just had a call from them. What did they want? They think I've got some information they want. And do you? Possibly. What about? I, uh, I can't say. This is your East Tamarese mates again. You're protecting someone else. For God's sake. Graham, what the hell is going on? Look, it's not that I don't trust you. It, it's what happens to the information once it's out. It's the channels higher up I'm concerned about. This is ridiculous. Let me just find out a bit more about these guys. See what we're up against. I can do it on my own without raising suspicion. If you are concealing any evidence at all, I will have... Just give me a bit more time on this, boss. We've got the number of the call coming into Matt's phone. Private line? No, it's public, but it's local. Came from a blue phone at the newsagent. It was only 20 minutes ago. Maybe someone saw the caller. Not you. You're the target. I'm the only one that knows what these guys look like. Go with them. I want to know what's going on. Boss? What do you want me to do with this kid? I thought you'd send him back to school. He says he won't go. How old are you, Kirby? Can you not handle one child on your own? Well, he's asking for you, boss. Do you think you'd just give me a minute? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, no. told you to sort this out. What do you want me to do? Carry him to school. I weigh 72 kilos. That's impressive. Bring his parents in, talk to his headmaster and find these thugs have been bullying him. You want me to do all that? Oh, for heaven's sake. Take Rainer, a rook. Whatever, just do it. And you, go and sit in the mess room and don't move a muscle. Is there anything to eat? No. Thanks, Sergeant Tom. Yes. The news agent cited the caller. The blue phone at the back of the shop, he had to get coins from the front desk to use it. And? Well, it sounds like the driver of the Falcon following me. Only the news agent got a much better look. She's looking through photos now. Uh, any fingerprints on the phone? Wiped clean. So this person has form? Safe bet. Graham? Leave it with me, boss. <sighs> Stay with him. Hey, that kid in the mess room, is he OK? One, two, one. Sorry. 
believe it. Are you all right? I'm fine. You don't look fine. Leave it. I'll get Peroni to clean up. Must be great then, boss. Oh, sit down, will you? You're making me dizzy. I reckon I could do boxing if I had a proper trainer. Like you. Kid, my boxing days are very far past. What about your training days? Whew. Big giddy. You don't have to be a fighter. There are other things. I mean, school. What subjects are you good at? None of them, really. Well, there must be something you like doing. I like eating. I know my kids pick on me. It's because I'm an easy target. I'll have a word to these kids when they're brought in. Do you want me to make you a cup of tea? No, thanks. You think I'm hopeless too? All right, white and two sugars. You really shouldn't have that much sugar. Do you want to make it or don't you? Peroni! Don't forget your appointment, one o'clock. Thank you, detective. Hey, boss. There's someone here to see you. Uh, Major Drug Investigation Division. It's uh, Rex. Rex Kinnear. <laughs> How are you, big fella? You guys know each other? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were at the academy together. What? Together? Uh, well, uh, I'm older than I look. Yeah, and I'm... Younger than I look. Take care. Come on in. Take a pew. Oh. <laughs> I'd heard you were retiring. Yeah, two weeks. Yeah. How about you? Got your number yet? I'm plugging on. <laughs> What's serious? You're a fisherman, aren't you? Yeah, when I have the time. Well, take your retirement, mate. All the time in the world, then. So, what brings you up here? Oh, look at I got this case I was hoping to wrap up before I take the watch and bugger off to Rosebud. Uh, a bloke that you fellas investigated a couple of months ago. Enrico Tavares? Tavares? Well, you must know he's dead. Yeah, I've been talking to the guy who killed him. Jose de Souza. Yeah. He's been helping out with information on Tavares. A couple of inmates were, uh, were paid to give him a beating, so suddenly we don't look like the bad guys anymore. So he was behind that? I don't know. The inmates are lifers, so they're not saying. What were they after? A USB drive that D'Souza took from Tavares. Now, apparently one of your members has got it, so... I thought I'd better get up here before whoever's behind these attacks turns up on your bloke's doorstep. You're too late. Well, they've been following him around for the last two days. They actually threatened him this morning. Is he all right, or...? Oh, he's fine. This particular member can take care of himself. Yeah, but... Not against these guys, Tom. I mean, if they can get to D'Souza in jail, then... Come on. Jail's a sieve. Yeah, but these guys are different. They're heavy hitters. Believe me, Tom, you don't want your bloke anywhere near these thugs. You have in your possession a USB drive containing all the information off Enrico Tavara's computer. Yes or no? Yes, boss. Have you read it? Well, I can't read it. It's in some sort of a code. Oh, just leave it to us to read. We'll crack any code. Uh, you said uh, Tavares was militia, the, the, so this would be information about his militia activities. Well, I'm thinking drugs. Which is why I'm here. Lots of these ex-militia, once they got kicked out of Timor by the Indonesians, nothing else to do. They're criminals anyway, so drugs is the obvious choice. All right, let's have a look at this USB drive. I could hold the key to an investigation I've spent months on. Withholding a piece of material evidence like that would be obstructing police. What the hell is that? Looks like a twisty sandwich. Tom. I, I want you to uh, give me this USB drive. I don't have it here. Then get the bloody thing from wherever it is and bring it to me. Don't make me get a search warrant, Constable. And take Jones with you. I don't want you wandering around out there by yourself with these blokes after you. Uh, 
Uh, boss, the principal says uh, Francis isn't a bad kid, but he's no great star at anything. And he doesn't do anything to help himself. You know, the kids pick on him because he's... Tommy. Yeah, and his hygiene levels aren't so great. Shouldn't his parents be looking after this? They're not in the country. They're doctors at a clinic in Ethiopia. Oh, great. Leave your kids so you can save the world. So who is he living with? Well, he's living with his grandma. We went past, but there's no one home. Where's your grandma, Francis? At home. Well, is, what, is she out shopping or something? She never goes out. Hey, Francis, we went past there. No one's home. She's always there. Francis, this isn't helping. She's depressed. She's always in bed. She just doesn't answer the door. You have to go in and wake her up. Boss? No. Boss? We got a problem. Matt's room in the pub's been trashed. And Chris didn't hear a thing. So they're not amateurs. No, I've taken it apart. They really want this USB drive. Did they get it? No. No, I've got it. Right. Well, I'll take that and get out of your hair. What do you plan to do with it? Get it to the high-tech crime centre, find out what's on it. Well, I could take days. So? Well, these guys are here now. We should go after them. Well, that's too risky. Well, I'm the one at risk. It's me they're after. Not once your senior sergeant gives me the USB drive. Yeah, well, they're not going to know that, are they? They'll keep coming. What do you suggest? Well, I reckon they trashed the room, couldn't find the drive, and that's when they called me. They said they'd ring again, and I reckon they will. All right, so we wait for the call. That sets up a meet. We arrest him. No, I really don't think that's a good idea. No, they've got a point, Rex. These blokes aren't going to take Graham's word for it that he hasn't got the drive anymore. Not if they're as serious as you say they are. No. But we use my men. Well, my people are perfectly capable. And mine have done it dozens of times. Look, if you want this thing, we use my guys. Well, obviously, Graham's the one who's going to have to make the handover. I'll call them. Get them on the road. You let me know the second they make contact. All right, well, I'm staying down at the pub. All right. Uh, boss, your appointment, 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah, on my way. Great. So did you want us to go to the kid's house, wake up his grandmother? Yeah, I'll, I'll take him. You sure? Yeah, positive. Why does that lady keep hassling you about the doctor? Adults never notice kids. Are you sick? I'm fine. She's pretty committed. There must be something really wrong with you. Are you gonna die? My granddad died. We had a party. It's called a wake. Are you going to have a wake? You're going to get in the car. I told you, she won't get up. You have to go in. If this is a joke, it's not, I swear. He's really here. Mrs. Um... Uh, Sullivan, Janet. Uh, can we have a chat in private? <sighs> it's all right, Mrs. Sullivan. I just need to have a talk about Francis. Oh, Francis is a good boy. I'm sure he is. It's just he's having a bit of trouble at school. Oh, please don't take him away. Please, he's all I've got. It's all right, Gran. I don't think he actually wants me. Is it cold in here? Uh, why don't we go and sit in the sun? I can make tea. The boy's being bullied mercilessly. He needs some sort of parental guidance. Is there any chance that his parents could come home? They're on contracts. They won't be home for another six months. He won't last six months. It wasn't supposed to be just me. His, his grandfather... Yeah, Francis told me that he'd died. It was his last day at work. We were supposed to start our new lives together. Travelling? Thanks, love. No, I just wanted to spend time in his garden. Which he is. A lot of time. This is where we sprinkled the ashes. 
Any chance of some sugar? You really shouldn't have no. sugar. No. It's your body. I know it's hard for you, but you really have to pull yourself together. The boy needs you. I know. I know. I'll try. You'll be right now. I've had a good chat with your gran. We're going to sort a few things out. Will I see you again? No. Why not? Because I'm busy. I just wanted to keep you in the loop. You had some lunch? Oh, no, I've been busy. Tom, you've got to make time for these things. Look, Chris does a good steak. I think did is the operative word. It's all risotto and juice these days. Well, in that case, I'd better have a pie then. Uh, lamb and rosemary or duck and herbs? Doesn't anybody make a good plain beef pie anymore? Oh, whatever you decide. Uh, Rex? I'll have the tuna salad then. Right here. Salad. I remember the days when you'd put away a two-pound steak and then still come back for seconds. Yeah, well, that was 20 years and two cholesterol points ago. Now it's 4K every morning and gym twice a week. You know, our age, Tom, we've got to keep ourselves healthy. Bad shit stops your heart. Speaking of which, you're looking a little unwell. Mate. Don't you start. I'm right, I'm just saying you've got to take care of yourself. It's no good waiting until after you retire. You remember Gary Jackson? Not being looser, isn't he? It was a cemetery. Heart attack. Two weeks after he got the gold watch, I'm telling you, Tom, you got to get yourself fit before you retire. Like that pie you just ordered. That's 30% fat right there. Thank you. I should change your order to the salad, huh? Uh, yeah, all of a sudden, I'm not feeling up. You could afford to lose a couple of pounds. You okay? Yeah, hey, Rex, this operation. The boys are on their way. They'll be here in two hours. Well, I'd be a lot happier if my troops were there to provide backup. Well, I'd like to, Tom, but it makes no sense having two lots of people falling all over each other. Just, I don't want Constable Graham's safety compromised. Well, trust me, I've done this dozens of times before. Look. I know you're concerned about your man. And if it makes you any happier, I'll let you know what we're doing every step of the way, where the meat is, what time it is, what's going on. Tom, it's my last stop. Boss. Is everything OK? What? Like with you. Why wouldn't everything be OK? I don't know, mate. You just look a little crook. Why don't you go see a doctor? Go see Sophie. When was the last time you went to see a doctor? Can't remember. But I'm not crook. What the hell are you doing talking to Jones about my health? Don't you have any respect for my privacy? My health is my business. I don't need you broadcasting your opinions to every man and his dog. I haven't said anything to anyone. Not even a dog. Why would Jones, of all people, suddenly be suggesting I need to see a doctor? Probably because blind Freddy could see that there's something seriously wrong with you. You haven't said anything? No. And if you were in a better frame of mind, you'd know that. Well, anyway, you've done your bit. I've been to see the doctor, everything's fine. Just a bit of heartburn. Sophie said that. Not that it's anyone's business, but yes. Wow. She's even better than I thought. Diagnosis by telepathy. No actual examination needed. She rang, boss, looking for you. Well, the pain's gone. 
How many painkillers did you take to mask it? Look, Amy, I'm getting sick of this. I'm a grown man. I don't need you fussing. If I need to go and see a doctor, I'll go and see a doctor. Fair enough. No, you're right. I don't know what I was thinking. It's none of my business. But if Jones, of all people, can tell there's a problem, then pretty soon whatever's going on with you is going to be everyone's business. The kid's grandma sent him back to school. He didn't make it past the corner shops. Who did this to you? Same two as always. Stephen and Marcus. Can't you keep away from them? How? When they're not in school, they hang around the corner shop. Well, can't you go a different way? Grant says stick to the main road or I might get kidnapped by a serial killer. Well, the chances of that are pretty remote. Not according to television. All right, you wait here. I'm sending someone out to bring in these bullies. What's the point? You can't stop them. No one can. We'll see about that. Raina, O'Rourke, go find those two boys and bring them in, will you? Well, they're probably back at school. Drag them out of class if you have to. Where's Graham? Um, mess room. Ah. I've just spoken with Senior Sergeant Kinnear. He tells me his men are on their way up from Melbourne. Melbourne. Yeah, I know, he told me. When? About an hour ago. Listen, I'd be much happier if there were people from this station backing you up as well. Oh. Senior Sergeant Kinnear seems to know what he's doing. Oh, I'm sure he does. I just don't like the idea of you at the centre of an operation without your workmates backing you. Oh. That's cool. Cool. These blokes don't seem cool to me. Look, boss, if you want to pull rank, that's your call, but... I'll be the one out in the middle of it, and frankly, the less people around me waving guns, the better. Let me know as soon as I call you. Sure. Do you want one of these? Yeah. Uh, Amy, if you're a drug squad senior detective sergeant... I would have had a pretty fast promotion in the last five seconds, but go on. And you were organising an operation in a country town that you'd never even been to before. Would you exclusively use your own drug squad detectives or would you want to use some local knowledge? Am I a cowboy? Not as much as some. Am I looking to get brownie points? You're about to retire. Might want to look good in front of my crew. Well, I'm sure he knows what he's doing, a detective of that experience. How yeah, sure. Why don't I make a call? Just see if he's as good as we all think he is. And, uh, yeah, don't worry. I will make the call, even if I don't get anything in return. You want me to go and see the doctor that much? So far, I'm coming across as half-hearted. Ah, uh, excuse me, boss. We've got the kids. Well, that's them. Mm-hmm. These are the two who have been monstering Francis. Yeah. Put them in the cell. In the cell? Yeah, the cell. I'll deal with them. Alone. So what are you going to do with this? Isn't there supposed to be someone else in here? You like it in here? Take a good long look at it. Because if you keep going the way you are... You're going to be spending a lot of time in a place like this. I want to go home. I'm sure you do. But I've been around long enough to know that kids who bully someone like Francis are going to be back here in four years for stealing cars and smoking dope. Now, you take a good, hard look at your future home. It was only a bit of fun. You think it was fun for Francis? You? No. Then what do you say? What do you say? I need to go to the toilet. Consider yourselves officially cautioned. You're letting us go? So 
feel right when you got a copper for a dad. You told those other kids I was your dad. Why? I thought they'd be impressed. Stop beating me up. But everyone in town knows who I am. You're new. Yeah, but I said you adopted me out and my step-parents moved in next door so we could all be together. I don't know how you expected to pull it off. You don't know anything about me. Yeah, I do. Lots. You go to the shops on Saturday afternoons. Not that you ever use the recycling bags, which you really should. You used to walk your dog. Sometimes you go fishing. You used to get visitors, but you haven't had any in a while. You watch TV really late at night. And you go to the toilet a lot. Anyway, the dad thing worked for a while. Then they started getting suspicious. I was trying to figure out a way to get you to parent-teacher night. Well, you don't have to. Those kids are never going to bother you again. Trust me, you'll be lucky if they ever look you in the eye again. And I'll organise some services for your grandmother. See, I knew you could fix everything. But this ends here. You've got to tell the truth to the kids at school. You've got to find some friends of your own age. We can't be friends. No. Look, I've got to do a few things and then uh, I'll give you a lift home. Right? A lift? In the police car? Yes, of course, in the police car. In the meantime... Do you want me to make you a cup of tea? No. Since you like the damn cars so much, you can go and give Peroni a hand to wash them. Really? You trust me with the cars? About as much as I trust Peroni. And will you teach me to box? Don't push your luck. Boss, can I say? Everyone has complete confidence in Kinnear's ability as a detective. In purely operational terms, Graham couldn't be in safer hands. Purely operational terms? How much have you seen of Kinnear lately? I haven't seen him at all for ten years. What's going on? Well, word is he's under investigation by ethical standards. What for? Outgoings out of proportion to incomings. Uh, they think Rex is on the take. Well, they think something's going on. Well, when you've been in the force as long as Kinnear has, there's going to be a few people out there that don't like you. Absolutely. So, I've I... I've been waiting for this. I had a chat to Chris... Kinnear had a visitor at the pub an hour ago. A guy matching the description of the man following Graham. The man who made the call from the newsagent. So you think he's involved with these men? Which would also mean he was involved with Enrico Tavares. All I'm saying is it might be worth having a chat to him before Graham gets in the middle of Kinnear's operation. Where's Graham? He's out. Out. He uh, took a call, made a call, left. Well, did he say where he was going? He said you'd know. Rex's mobile's turned off. So is Graham's. How far away are the drug squad detectives? An hour. Where are they meeting Rex? Well, they're waiting for him to call them. All right. We need to find Graham. Where did the call in come from? The same payphone as this morning. OK, get somebody out to the news agency see if she saw which way the caller went. What about the call that Graham made? It went to Senior Sergeant Kinnear's mobile. Which he's turned off. He's staying at the pub. We'll go and check there. In the meantime, get everybody else available out on the road. Looking for Graham, Kinnear, the crooks, all of the above. Do we need backup for this? Dad is in here. What if he is? And he doesn't know we're suspicious. Rex? Rex, are you in there? It's Tom. Is it possible we've got this all wrong? Maybe Rex is legit. He's just taking his time telling everybody where the meat is. Doesn't explain what he's doing talking to the blokes following Graham. And it doesn't explain that. Enrico Tavares. 
He's working with them. They're the two faces picked out by the news agent. Unlawful assault, possess drugs, possess weapons, grievous bodily harm, manslaughter. They're going to kill him. Where the hell would they go? Well, if it's trap, it's got to be somewhere quiet, away from people. W A uh, water waterfall S H I N G washing, washing powder. powder. It's his shopping list. Hang on. Four. Four. Phone number. D. G, no, six. It's a map reference. Forty-four D six. Burnie Park, outside town. Sergeant Tom? Francis? I was waiting for you to drive me home. This isn't the way. Are we on a chase? got in the way. So, it's over. Your name's on that USB drive, isn't it? That's why you had to get rid of it. Tom, we've been mates a long time. Don't. Just let me go. Out the back, you'll never hear from me again. I've got a wife, Tom, two kids. Now, they can't see this happen to me. Jail. The shame of... For what? One lousy mistake? I... What happened to you? What, are you really this naive? You think it's worth it what we do year after year for the pathetic money they pay us? The scumbags we lock up make more than we do, Tom, and they're out again before we even draw our next measly pay. I gave the force 30 years, Tom. I was just getting back what I was... Owed. Bullshit! You think I haven't stood in this room a hundred thousand times and listened to this lame crappy story? I'm just balancing the scales. You had a choice, Rex. You had a choice to be a good copper and an honourable man, but you chose to look after yourself and bugger everybody else. And where's on I got in you? Hmm? What do you got to show for this honourable life of yours, Tom? Look the trick up. He lived next door to you, yeah?
Was he a friend? No. He wanted me to teach him how to box. He thought then that he'd be strong, that he wouldn't get hit anymore. He didn't understand that it was all about being able to take the hits. First thing my old trainer ever taught me is to take the hits. You have to take the hits. You can't be scared. You've got to keep getting up. No matter what. Otherwise you lose the heart for it. If you can't take the hits, you just can't go on. I was in a twisty sandwich. The kid got up. He got up for you. <laughs> yeah, he did. And what are you going to do? Tom? Come on, Dad. You take it easy tonight. I don't want you hurt. I'll be fine. Now, if you go down... I won't go down. If you do, there's no shame in staying down, OK? OK. Right, come on, let's go. No sense getting yourself killed, Tom. Dad, I won't go down. What? What are you doing here? Well, it's just that it's 9.30 and you're not at work yet. Well, couldn't you have run? I did. You don't look so great. I'm fine. I just... I slipped in. I think you need to see a doctor. I'm going to make an appointment with Sophie. I don't want to see a doctor. This is ridiculous. I'll see you at the station. Oh, for heaven's sake. What the hell are you... They're trying to kill me. Who? Them. Oh, don't you have a hanky here? All right. What's all this about? Who's trying to kill you? Kids. What kids? Don't know. Look, if you're being bullied, it's a matter for your parents and your teachers. You're the sergeant. You're the boss of everything. Not today, I'm not. If you get bullied again... You don't wash up much. You need to get to school. Can you take me? I've got to go to work. You can drop me off on the way. It'll take me at least 20 minutes to get ready. Oh wait. Jeez, you go to the toilet a lot. Yeah? Well, you don't blow your nose enough. 
Wow, a real police car. With a real policeman. Can we turn the siren on? No. What about the radio? Don't you need to call someone? No. Where's your gun? The station. That's dumb. It's for security. But what if you need it? I won't. Yeah, but what if you do? Where do you live, anyway? Next door to you. You just moved in. We moved in two years ago. I've been busy. This is the back of the school. Can't we park out the front? I haven't got time. We're at the school. This is the school. Go to school. Ah, oh, boss, uh, there's a few things you should know about. There's a praying out on the highway. No injuries, but uh, Joss and Kelly are out there now. I need the pay sheets signed and the reconciliation. Yep, you're right, by the end of the week. All right, it's just that we're a bit behind, so sooner well, tomorrow. Or well, this morning would be good. Right, right. Uh, also, there are some accountable documents that need writing off. Oh, and the cleaners need painting. And there's one Can I just get a cup of coffee? Well, that's the thing. Joss broke the plunger. Is that all? Uh, yep, that's all. But uh, those pay sheets are their priority, boss. Yes. Boss, I've made an appointment with the doctor. I don't need to see so any... So if he gets booked out really early without an appointment... you've Amy, got no chance. 